Hey, it's Tom, and today we're going to build something really interesting. Today we're going to build a surveillance camera in a web browser. So we'll use uh, React.js and TensorFlow.js to build an app that will use a camera built into device to monitor the whole field of view of the camera. And as soon as it will detect a person within the uh, view range, it will start recording the video and then when the person will leave the, um, this, the space monitored by the camera, it will stop re recording and save the record in a local storage. Okay, I think that it's enough details, so let's jump to the code. Okay, so as usually, we are starting with the uh, React Starter app that we have built uh, in the past. The link should be somewhere uh, in your right top corner. And I already added a couple additional um, variables and consts. So let me explain you uh, how the app is working. So basically, I added uh, two dependencies. The first one is the TensorFlow model uh, Coco SSD, which means the, uh, this, this is a single shot detector, one of the models used in uh, object detection that is already built into TensorFlow.js. And it's very efficient. It's it's trained on ninety classes, and uh, is able to work in a real time on modern phones and uh, computers. The second dependency is TensorFlow.js. So, as you probably know, or maybe not, uh, TensorFlow is a framework that enables us to easily um, run uh, machine learning models. And in this case, TensorFlow.js is built in JavaScript and enables us to run those models in JavaScript. Uh, except from that, there is no change uh, comparing to, to the uh, basic app. Same in the index.html. It's uh, just an empty HTML file uh, with just added a bootstrap to make it looking a little bit better. And then there is an app. It's a function component. And uh, because of that, uh, there are a couple problems that I had to uh, resolve, but I will explain you that later. And as soon as we will uh, run this uh, app, we'll see something like this. So uh, there is a video here, a video stream from a Media Recorder, start and stop button, and uh, there will be a list of records uh, of entries of person that, we, that, that our app will detect. So going through the uh, basics, maybe. Uh, let's start with, with current structure of the web. So right here, we have a video object. Uh, it has autoplay, uh, plays in line because we don't want to uh, run that in uh, full screen mode, mute it because it's no need to um, play the sound that it's being recorded. And uh, we already, uh, created a reference and uh, we'll use the use ref hook to um, get access to this element. This is this exact hook and going, oh, sorry, maybe let's increase the size. Sorry, I always forgot about it. Okay. And uh, then we have two buttons. So the first one is the start button. It will start uh, working of the app. So it, it will start monitoring field of view of the camera. And uh, right here, we have a switch that we are using uh, to shoot record reference. Shoot record reference. Uh, I'm not using use state right here because recording, uh, when we will start monitoring field, the the function that will be used to monitor, monitor uh, will be called recursively. And because of that, uh, the state of other uh, variables that we will want to track uh, won't be updated because uh, as you probably know, or I, I hope you, you, you know, uh, there's something called backpack. And when we call one method and the method calls uh, recursively itself, then it has the local copy of the variables that, that were uh, provided at the moment of the first call. And when they change, uh, it doesn't really change uh, in the 
like nth call of the method. But that's that's some something uh, caused by JavaScript. Okay, so we have two buttons. If we press start button, uh, we just uh, re remove the disabled attribute on the stop button and set disabled on the start to not press that twice. And then we'll call the detect frame and that will uh, that will be our method that will monitor the field of view. Uh, stop button works really uh, in a similar way. So we change the value of the uh, shoot record reference. We also change the uh, attributes of the buttons to enable st start once again and disable stop because it's already stopped. And we'll call stop recording method. Okay, except of, of that, uh, there is just a conditional rendering of the list of all records that, that will be uh, saved. And they will be stored in records. And in this case, we are using state. Uh, by the way, the records will be um, stored in local storage, so you can at some point easily add methods to uh, just download those videos uh, and store in like downloads folder. Okay, so uh, next maybe let's go to show you what's the de detect frame doing. So detect frame is a simple method right now, and if uh, if this should record reference uh, is true, uh, then we'll do something. And if not, we just call stop re-recording. Why we use that? Because at some point, um, when detect frame is will be calling itself recursively, we can press stop button and the should record reference value will change into false. And because of that, we have to stop recording and return from the uh, method because we don't want to use it any longer. In stop recording, uh, that's very similar way. If it's already stopped, then it's it's just uh, pointless to to continue. We'll just return. Uh, it's just a security if statement, and uh, then we just set false to uh, recording ref. So recording. Uh, ref is, is just a, a boolean variable uh, that will be used to indicate if recording uh, is in progress or not. Um, we could do this uh, by using media recorder that will be introduced in a moment, but uh, I noticed that it has some delays and sometimes it can be buggy to relay only on that. Okay, so the next thing that's already implemented right here is use effect. And as you see, we have an empty dependency list. Uh, if you don't know how use effect is working, there also should be a link somewhere here. I already pre prepared a video about that. And uh, use effect, in general, uh, it's um, the creators of hooks uh, don't like us to create uh, to, to use async functions uh, returned from use effect. So. Uh, it's it, it's just better to define an async function uh, within the um, arrow function provided to use effect and just call it immediately. Uh, you can find an explanation uh, in React.js uh, documentation in the um, use effect um, section. Okay, so this effect will be called only once when the component will be uh, mounted. So uh, at, at start, we just add attributes disabled to the start and stop button because nothing is ready yet. And then there is this if, uh, which checks if there is a, uh, an ability to use media de devices on the particular device that's uh, running the, the app. Uh, so in general, if there is a camera. And uh, if we are able to do this, we just uh, try to get the stream. Uh, uh, get user media and the audio is true and the video is true. Uh, by the way, um, I noticed that on the iPhone uh, by default video uh, is calling the front facing camera. But if you would like to use the rear facing camera, the rear camera, uh, then you can also do this uh, without any problem. 
just change the uh, parameter here to be uh, user facing. The key is is user facing probably, and the value should be environment. Okay, so we assign the stream to the uh, window stream, and then the video element. Uh, that's the reference to our uh, video right here. Uh, we use this uh, reference to set the source to, to the current stream from the camera. So thanks to that, as you see, uh, when the component gets mounted and the access to the stream is uh, uh, received, then we set the source to the video and we can see the preview of the uh, data got from the camera. And also the start button uh, is not the, the disabled any longer. Okay, oh, that was a lot of things that were already pre prepared. So right here, right now, uh, let me go to my uh, code reference because I already um, prepared that. And uh, this will allow me to um, to, to uh, not make any mistakes because I wouldn't like to lose your time. Okay, so right here, uh, another thing that we would like to, to do is to uh, get to load the model from TensorFlow because the model is, uh, you can treat it as some kind of blob or, or bundle uh, that contains the weights for the neural network to, uh, to process the, the objects that we will provide to, to this network. And in this case, uh, we may need, um, yeah, let's create a model reference. And that will use ref and will be null. Okay, and right here, uh, we can try to load the model uh, from Coco and then uh, assign to the reference. Okay, so let's do this. So Okay, load it and the model ref current will be equal to model. Okay, so this will cause that the use effect will take a little bit longer, up to a couple of seconds. But uh, at this point, we have our model loaded, so we are already ready to, to start using that. Okay, uh, so that's, that's the current update right here, and you can notice that it will reload, and yeah, it will take up to a couple of seconds to, to load. The next step uh, is that uh, we would like to, of course, press the start button and then uh, start monitoring the field. So when we press start button, uh, the next thing we want to do is to uh, provide the uh, frame got from the uh, camera and uh, process that using our model. Okay, so predictions is equal to uh, model ref current detect video element current. Oh my god. Okay. So currently predictions uh, will be a list of the uh, objects detected uh, within our frame. And the next step we would like to introduce, let me maybe copy some part of this code because uh, writing the for loops will just lose our time. Uh, the next step we would like to uh, do here is to go through those predictions and check the classes because every pred prediction contains a uh, uh, some some score parameter that tells us uh, what's the probability that the detected object is the object the neural network thinks it is. So, for example, the first object might be a person, and 
Well, actually, maybe let's just console it. So it will be just easier for you to understand that. Fred, uh, JSON, stringify this predictions of i. Okay, I think that that should work. Okay, one moment. Yeah, inspect and let's press start. Okay, yeah, uh, because the detect frame was called only once. Uh, so we got just one result. And as you see, there is a B box. The B box is actually the bounding box. So it shows us the uh, position of the object. The next uh, field is class, it's a person. That's good, I'm a person. And the next one is the score. That's, uh, in general, that means that uh, there's a 72% of uh, confidential confidential that uh, I'm the person. So the detected object is a person. Okay, so we can go back to here. And so it means that uh, mm, this will be our variable to detect if the person was detected within the frame. Um, okay, so next we just need some additional logic to be added here. And that's the logic. So if we found the person, then it means that it's worth to start recording. Uh, actually, we can remove that for, for now. I will explain you that a little bit mm, later. So yeah, maybe let's do it even in this way. Okay, so if we found a person, we can start recording. And if there is no person, then we can stop recording. And right now there is uh, uh, some small problem with neural networks that I would like to explain. Because uh, it's not like in the real world and real life that a person looks at another person and says, okay, that's the, the, the person and it's able to track that constantly. So for some reason, uh, if I will try to, for, for example, uh, spin or or will will change my position of my face, for example, to the right to or to to the left. In some frames, got from the camera, or when I'm just moving very fast, that can happen. Uh, that the model will be unable to detect me in some frames, and if that would happen in our model, then it would be possibility that we will have a lot of short videos. Uh, that would last like uh, half a second or one second because sometimes mm, once maybe per 20 frames maybe twice per like 50 frames the model is unable to de detect the object even though the object is there so to prevent that i thought that it might be a good solution to have some uh, some array to have an array of of the last 10 frames and if within those last 10 frames there was a detected person then it means that we just lost our uh, ability to detect that and if we have still uh, not if we are still not detecting person in in further frames then just stop re-recording but uh, if that just was a small mistake and the model was unable to detect person in like five frames uh, in a row or even nine frames in a row, then it's no problem. Yeah, let's just con continue recording uh, further frames and still create a video. Okay, so because of that, I thought that it might it might be uh, worth to, to create uh, an array. Okay, we just need to create that const will be this ref okay that's an empty array that should work so if we detect the person then we just uh, push through it will be just an array of of booleans true or false so if we detected the person we just can push the true to to the array uh, if not, it, if it wasn't a person, but in the current last 
detections uh, array. There is a, at least one object that that is boolean and is true. It is true. They are they are all booleans. Uh, then just continue recording because that might be the case I mentioned to you uh, a moment ago that we just lost the focus of the camera or something weird just happened. That just happens uh, from time to time. And uh, if there is no object uh, de detected with, within the last 10 frames, then just okay, stop re recording. Maybe there is, uh, it's just pointless to record any longer. Okay. And the next step is just to uh, just re remove uh, older frames from the last detections ref. So if there are more than 10 elements, we just slice it to uh, leave the 10 most uh, recent. Okay. Oh, but as you may notice, this method is still being called only once. So uh, to to be able to um, to do this once again, we just need to call request animation frame to get the new um, frame from from the, the the our window source, and then we call recursively detect frame. And this is exact this is exactly the reason why we are using references refs uh, instead of just states because uh, when we are just constantly calling that. Um, recursively, then we just keep the uh, old copy of the variables that would be in, 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 in a state. And using refs, we have still, we have constantly uh, up to date values. Okay, so uh, we are able to de detect as long as, uh, as long as there is a person. So if we, maybe let's, uh, do something like like um, if we found person, then just console log log found person, and I will show you how exactly it's working. Okay, sorry. Okay, so as you see, it's constantly logging, but uh, as long as I will just maybe yeah it stopped recording it started recording again so yeah our system is, is is probably working yeah i can do something like this also stop recording and i'm back okay it's working stop re recording yeah uh, basically it's working right now it looks like uh we still have to uh start saving those records so as we are here let me maybe uh, also copy the part that is responsible for recording so oh right here right here we have a recorder reference once again we are using references and we are using new media recorder and media re recorder uh, it's a web API that is already available in Chrome since a couple of versions. But if you would like to use that in uh, Safari uh, on iOS or on macOS, you have to go to the advanced settings uh, and enable experimental features. And in the list of experimental features, there is a media re recorder because that's still in a, some kind of beta version of, of, the, of the Safari. But uh, as I will show you later, it's working pretty fine on uh, Safari, even on iPhone. It's working in real time. So we are creating a media re recorder and providing a stream. Uh, the stream is the stream that was already binded to our window. And then we call record reference current start. So we are starting recorder. But there is also one more method that is very important right here. So it's on data available. So when we stop re recording, uh, this method is called and this is providing us uh, data that was recorded in media recorder. 
So right here in this method, we just create a title that will be date to, to, to be able to verify uh, mm, and when something wrong has happened. And uh, href is just um, a, a URL to, to the uh, data in local storage. So we can use that as a source uh, later on on our list. And then we call set re records. Uh, we are using use state right here. And that's another hack that you can use if you would like to use uh, use state uh, within a function that, that is calling uh, itself recursively. So uh, when you are using uh, set method in, in use state, you don't have to provide just a new value because in this case, if we would provide only this, uh, only for example, the uh, records, and the new re record, the records will be constantly empty because that's because the, the backpack that we, we had uh, at first run. So we can provide a method. It's just an, a, an arrow function right here. And the set records provides us uh, already always up to date version of the current state. And this is previous re records. And because of that, we can re return a new array created from previous records and the new record. Each record is just an object containing the href and title. So this is a hack that you could use uh, if you have this kind of problem like uh, calling uh, one hook from another hook or calling a hook from a recursively called function or any other uh, tricky um, solution. Okay, so we should be able now to start recording, but uh, we also should be able to stop re recording. Uh, and that's in that's here. Let's update the code. So as I mentioned be, before, we are setting the, uh, the this flag recording ref um, to to be false. Uh, we stop the current recorder. And when, as soon as we call this stop method, this on data available method also will be called. And uh, yeah, we also clear the last detections ref uh, array because when we start recording again, uh, we don't want to have the uh, pre-filled array because it will always start it might always start re recording even though there there's nothing just because of those last 10 frames okay i think that the code is uh should be working yeah let's see if that's working uh yeah we can remove the log because that will mess our console okay Let's the app reload. Um, okay. Class. Okay, we we can just leave it as as it, as it is. Uh, okay, let's clear the console. Then we can start recording, and uh, the app detected probably, hopefully, that there is a person right here, but I can just do something like this and it should stop re-recording and save the record. Okay, but it didn't. So we have something to debug here. Uh, inspect, yeah, maybe start recording. Uh, recorder ref is not defined. Okay, yeah, that's, uh, that's the way in which uh, we have some bugs, but it's it's still easy to fix them. Const recorder, recorder ref. Okay, no, because we want to track our recorder. Okay, so in the start recording, we have we create that, assign, and start, and then in stop. Yeah, we would like to stop that. Okay, right now it should start working, I hope. OK, 
Okay, give it a moment. Okay, let's maybe, um, yeah, let's start it right here. And let's do this. Okay. And right now, let's do this. I am here. Okay, I'm disappearing. Yep, it's working. Yeah, this is the second video. And that's the first video. Okay, I can stop recording. And uh, now we can uh, maybe do some kind of simple experiment. I don't know, maybe that should work. Okay, so let's assume that uh, I use this app because I'm leaving my, my desk. Right now I'm working from home as probably everyone. But okay, I'm, I'm uh, leaving my desk and I'm leaving my iPhone right here. So maybe let's do something like this. And okay. So I'm right now I'm not in a field of view of my uh, phone camera, of my, of my MacBook camera, but I can start recording. Okay. I'm not there any, long, any longer. But there is some... Hmm. Let's steal that. And then I'm coming back. And I see... Oh my god, someone has stolen my iPhone. What has happened? And I can go... Yeah, the second video is with me. Anyway, I can go and you... Oh, I see there was a, someone who has stolen my iPhone and that was that person. Yeah, the app is working, uh, hopefully. Okay, um, I strongly believe that uh, I was able to explain you how the app is working. Uh, of course, um, down below in this uh, in the uh, description so section there will be a link to the uh, github io page that you can use to uh, test this app on your uh, iphone or your macbook or your any other computer or android phone also uh, there will be also a link to the code sandbox uh, so we can play live with, with this code. And of course, as always, there will be a link to the repository in which you can find the code. And uh, one more thing I would like to show you is that you can also use your iPhone. So let me just, okay. Okay, so we can also use our iPhone and I hope there will be a stream Okay, okay, I would like to access the camera. Yeah, so maybe just reload the page. Yep. So, okay, I would like to use this iPhone as my surveillance camera. And uh, yeah, you see my charger right here. Anyway, but that might be uh pretty good okay so i'm 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 leaving my desk and then someone bad comes and is stealing my is stealing my keys and yeah i'm coming back to the, to to my iphone i'm pressing the stop button and I would like to see, okay, that's, that's the first video with me. I'm interested in this video, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's working and I hope that you will be able to see the uh, stream from my iPhone. And yeah, I hope uh, you will find this tutorial helpful and maybe you will even find the app helpful and useful. If, if so, yeah, I will be just just happy. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.